This episode of the Kill Innovations podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. You can become a supporter by visiting shop.filmmckinney.com and making a contribution. Your support helps defray the cost to produce, host, and stream the show. As always, any profits are donated to charities such as hackingautism.org. I'm Phil McKinney, and welcome to Season 11 of the Kill Innovations Podcast, a show about ideas, creativity, and innovation. A music theory book might seem like an unusual place to find inspiration for innovative thinking, but there's a musical principle that provides a useful metaphor for how innovators find inspiration, and also happens to separate the great composers from the mediocre ones. That principle is dissonance. In its most extreme form, dissonance is that terrible sound you hear when two notes don't harmonize, such as when someone sings off key in a choir. When used in moderation, however, dissonance is powerful, as evidenced by the emotional response provoked almost without fail by the song Someone Like You. The singer-songwriter Adela's masterpiece song, In the run-up to Adela's sweep of the 2012 Grammy Awards, the Wall Street Journal published a piece pinpointing the subtle examples of dissonance sprinkled throughout the song as its secret, tear-jerking power. Dissonance, by definition, creates tension and makes listeners crave resolution. Resolution is that natural direction for music to take, and so when it happens, it provides immediate relief without most listeners even realizing the tension was there in the first place. Though it can be difficult to identify as a lay person, the best composers understand its power and use it consciously to make their music more provocative by following the dissonance where it naturally leads them. What can innovators learn from this? Think of musical dissonance as an unnatural phenomenon that must be resolved to allow the natural state of musical harmony to return. The problem is, recognizing disharmony in the real world can be much more difficult than identifying a sour note in a musical composition, since we're so accustomed to seeing certain problems as intractable or natural. When a person can identify the dissonance of their situations, refusing to accept their naturalness, it allows them to lean into the dissonance and follow the path it carves to a logical resolution, the one that most wouldn't consider until it happens, just as most people can't identify musical dissonance except by the emotion it produces when it resolves. Two inspiring stories of innovation show us how simply recognizing a problem as an unnatural form of dissonance, rather than accepting it as the natural state of things, can open up new creative paths and vital solutions. When Shubranchi Chahari, a journalist for the BBC, traveled to Chhattisgarh, his home region in India, to cover the escalating guerrilla warfare there, he was troubled by much of the reporting he was seeing. News agencies were portraying the conflict in a two-dimensional, black-and-white manner. They were overlooking complex problems and misrepresenting the voices of the locals. He rejected the narrative that the rebels were all fanatically committed to the opposition Maoist cause. He began asking questions. What was the real reason for the people of his home region were taking up arms? He discovered that rather than a conflict between political ideologies, local communities, even people he had known from childhood, were resorting to armed conflict to draw attention to severe needs. The civil authorities had been ignoring their problems, and so the people living in small rural communities saw joining the rebels as the only opportunity they had to make their voices heard. Chirai left the BBC to work full-time on finding a solution to the problem that could save his home region from further violence. What he came up with was a mobile phone-based news network that the people of his home region could easily use a grassroots news network that can instantly share user-created news reports without needing the internet. This would be the first of its kind in the world. These poor rural communities had no internet, but nearly everyone had a mobile phone. With the help of an engineer friend, Chirati devised a clever way to reconfigure voicemail playback into a news broadcasting tool that anyone could edit and use. Villages recorded eyewitness reports and instantly shared them with everyone in their part of India who had a mobile phone. 
He also created CGNet Soiree, a website that uploaded the citizen news reports and presented them in a professional net edited format. Major news networks picked up these grassroots news alerts, many of them exposing government injustice, like the illegal withholding of wages. This exposure is pushing the government to crack down on corruption and make sure villagers are paid what they are due. The people stopped picking up rifles and began picking up mobile phones instead. Since its launch in February of 2010, CGNet Soiree has changed the news landscape of central India. It is the first mobile phone-based network in the world, and many rural communities in other countries are developing their own version. The innovation earned Charare the 2014 Global Digital Activism Award. And just to put this in context, NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden was in the running for the award, but Chirari topped Snowden for the honor. Chirari saw through the homogeneous reporting of the mainstream media and recognized the fundamental dissonance of the situation in his home region. Because the villagers' narratives were never heard, it would have been impossible for anyone not paying close attention to understand the real roots of the problem. The solution isn't highly technical or complicated either, but it's a revolutionary innovation that is restoring balance to the way news is reported in India and beyond. A second example of innovation from dissonance started with change. Like many other soldiers, Nick Watson, a former U.S. Army Ranger, experienced difficult transition back into civilian life. He left a world of incredible camaraderie, teamwork, and thrilling if dangerous adventures and traded for a sedentary lifestyle that was very lonely and dull in comparison, with nothing but his memories to occupy him. Thousands of other soldiers were experiencing the same rough transition, and in many cases, it is lethal. The suicide rate among veterans is twice the rate of civilians. Besides the trauma of war, Watson also experienced the suicides of two of his closest Ranger buddies, leaving him distraught and even less able to deal with his new civilian reality. Much of the conversation around veteran depression and suicide focuses on the need to help veterans with this transition, to make sure they're able to adapt to civilian way of life and all the comparative boredom and solitude it entails. Watson saw a problem with this. He wasn't willing to accept the notion that nothing of military life was useful or positive in civilian life. Rather than accept the dissonance between the two ways of lives as natural, Watson saw an opportunity to help veterans by allowing them to use the positive aspects of the military experience in a non-violent setting. The solution he came up with was team mountaineering expeditions for veterans, which involved camaraderie, intense physical challenges, and the possibility of life or death situations that veterans are especially well equipped to handle. He turned his idea into a company called Veterans Expeditions, or VTAX, co-created with Stacy Bear, another military veteran which puts veterans on alpine expedition teams that take on adventurous, ambitious mountain climbing adventures, learning mountaineering and wilderness survival skills in the process. His first expedition in 2010 included 16 veterans, and by 2013, he was up to 300 soldiers. The trips have made a huge difference in the lives of struggling veterans, and his brilliant ideas catching on. Nick Watson understood that combat is a life-altering experience that cannot simply be left behind when one returns home. He bridged that seemingly impossible gap between the two ways of life by embracing certain qualities in each and combining them into a natural, logical solution. Dissonance is just one way to describe how innovators see the world, but I find it particularly apt in that so many unexpected innovations spring from disharmony that were invisible to most people at least until someone decided to resolve them, and then it seems obvious. It's all about training yourself to accept nothing as the natural state of things. Situational dissonance, when something just doesn't seem quite right to you, is a chance to explore the imbalances and inefficiencies that are present everywhere. If you enjoyed today's show, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, or wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can find all the links and resources from this episode, along with every other episode going back to 2005 at filmmckinney.com. Just click on podcast. I would love to hear your feedback, such as your thoughts on the new format for the show, topics you would like covered, or any questions you might have. 
Ping me on Twitter at Phil McKinney, all one word, or on LinkedIn or Facebook. You can find links to where I hang out on social media at philmckinney.com. And as always, thanks for listening.